Chapter 71 Returning the Marriage Token You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 71 Returning the Marriage Token Translator Nyo I.B.O. Studio Editor Nyo I.B.O. Studio Feng Xiang was thoroughly embarrassed by what Eunuchta had said. He was the head of the Feng clan, yet, he had bowed to Eunuchta, and he also had to bow to the emperor. On the contrary, Feng Tianlan, the good.4. nothing, did not need to. This proved that not only did the emperor not recognize him as the head of the Feng clan, but he also did not even acknowledge Feng Xiang as a member of the Feng family. There was a glint in Feng Xiang's eye as he thought about this. Wait till I get my hands on the Feng family treasures, he thought. So what if he is the emperor? Once I become powerful, I will make sure to step on him, hard, and oppress him. Please proceed, eunuch de. Feng Tianlan bowed her head slightly. If someone treated her with respect, she would return that respect twofold. When eunuch de saw her respect for him, he bowed even lower. Then, he turned to face Feng Xiang and Su Jiai, straightening his back as he declared, according to the emperor, besides Feng Tianlan, all others must kneel to receive the imperial edict. But eunuch de, members of the Feng family don't need to bow to anyone, Feng Xiang returned the eunuch's words to him. Feng Xiang knew that Feng's need not bow, but he still sometimes bowed to important people, like the emperor, out of habit. Eunuch De looked at Feng Xiang unhappily and said, only those in the Feng bloodline have this special privilege. Feng Xiang was once again embarrassed by Eunuch De. Even though he was furious, he could only clench his teeth silently. He knelt begrudgingly, tilting his head slightly in defiance. Su Jiai had no choice but to kneel, too. Eunuch De looked at them scornfully then proceeded to read the edict. It was about the official annulment of Feng Tianlan and Si Rong's engagement, and their freedom to marry anyone they chose. Then, he took out a brocade box and used both hands to present it to Feng Tianlan. This is the marriage token that the emperor received from the Fengs long ago. We return it to you now. Marriage token Feng Tianlan fingered the ring on her left index finger. She wondered, isn't this ring? which Si Ma Bai returned to me, the marriage token. Why is there another one now? Feng Tianlan took the box from the eunuch, but her head was full of questions. She could see that the Feng and the Si families had a more complex connection than met the eye, but she couldn't make sense of it. Eunuch De ended by saying that he had to return to the palace and left. Feng Xiang glared at Eunuch De with evil and hatred in his eyes, like a snake. This man was merely a cheap palace servant, and he dared to be so rude to him. One day, Feng Xiang thought, I want this servant to kneel before me and beg for mercy. Since this is the marriage token, you should pass it to your father. Su Jiai eyed the brocade box in Feng Tianlan's hands and thought to herself, is that the family treasure that Feng Xiang was always talking about. When he heard her mention the marriage token, Feng Xiang stopped staring at the eunuch and stretched his hands out. Give me the token. This belonged to my mother. Feng Tianlan saw how both of them were very anxious to take the token from her, and quickly hugged the brocade box. The token belongs to the Feng clan, and it is not only yours. Give it to me, Feng Xiang commanded Feng Tianlan. He demanded full obedience. If he wanted her dead, then she had to die. All he wanted now was a brocade box. Su Jiai saw that Feng Xiang was doing things the hard way, so she put on a pleasant face and said gently, Tianlan, since the engagement has been called off, it won't be easy to find a man willing to take you. Pass the token to your father, and we'll find you a good match, so you won't have to worry about the rest of your life. Oh. Feng Tianlan raised an eyebrow at Su Jiai and mocked her, I don't suppose your brains have stopped working because of what happened to my third sister, have they? Chapter 72 Can't wait to marry her off you are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 72 Can't wait to marry her off translator Nyo I.B.O. Studio Editor Nyo I.B.O. Studio Su Jiai's face paled, 
and anger began to show on her face. Her daughter was a prodigy, but, during the battle, Feng Tianlan had turned her into a useless person. Even though her heart was full of hatred, Su Jiayi suppressed her anger for the sake of recovering the marriage token. She thought through the list of men who she could match with Feng Tianlan. Then, she put on a fake smile and said, General Wang is not bad. He's only in his early thirties, and he's never married. No concubines, and pretty good looking too, Feng Tianlan laughed at Su Jiayi's words, and her eyes filled with scorn when she heard the mention of General Wang. General Wang was 30.3 years old, which was young for a top general. He certainly had a lot of self.control and self.discipline. As for being handsome. He was just tall and not ugly. As for being unmarried and having no concubines, that was all true. But she knew that this General Wang had violent tendencies, especially in the area of sexual relations. If a girl were lucky, she got away with some cuts. If not, she could die. So, unless someone had similar kinds, who on earth would want to marry such a man? Su Jiayi saw Feng Tianlan staring straight at her as she spoke well of General Wang and concluded that she liked the sound of this man. She turned to Feng Xiang and asked, My dear, what do you think of this arrangement? I also think this is a good arrangement. Feng Xiang stretched his hands out towards Feng Tianlan. Give me the token, and I'll ask him tomorrow. This is a good match, so don't run away, all right. Quickly give the token to your father, and we'll make arrangements immediately, added Su Jiayi added hastily, as if this were an excellent arrangement, so she had to act fast or lose him to someone else. Su Jiayi was well aware of General Wang's fetishes. Because he was a high-ranking official, none of this was known to the public, and all received him well. So, if she arranged for Feng Tianlan to marry him, everybody would think that she was a wonderful mother for choosing such a good man. After all, nobody knew that General Wang was such a violent man at home. This arrangement would ensure that she would get the Feng family treasure and Feng Tianlan quietly killed at the same time. She would not just emerge unscathed but gain reputation for being a good mother. Therefore, this was the best arrangement she could think of. Feng Xiang nodded along in agreement and added, I'm familiar with General Wang, he's not bad. He's not a superficial man who only wants looks or talent. It will be a great privilege for you to marry him, so give me the token. Feng Tianlan continued to hold on tightly to the brocade box. She was disgusted by how these two were suddenly so enthusiastic about marrying her off to this awful man. Since you think he's such a good catch, why don't you give him to my third sister? Feng Tianlan put on her most concerned voice. My poor third sister is now considered a useless person, plus she's endured public humiliation, too. I'm sure General Wang is a wonderful man who won't reject her. A good catch. This was like pushing her into a burning fire. But what caught her attention was how both of them were very concerned with the token. What can possibly be inside this box, she wondered, that makes them want it so badly. Your sister has third prince, so how can I marry her off to someone else? Besides, you've been rejected by a prince, so no ordinary person will dare to marry you now. But General Wang is not an ordinary man. He's an exception. Don't reject this arrangement, Su Jiayi managed to suppress the anger boiling inside her. She wasn't going to let Feng Tianlan drive her up the wall so easily. Yuer was the hot topic of South Peace City. Never mind that she'd been rendered useless by a fight. She'd been glimpsed completely nude by thousands of lower dot class citizens. If Third Prince were no longer agreeable, Su Jiayi knew it would be nearly impossible for her to marry him. Chapter 73 a terrifying personality you are listening at novel full dot audio chapter 73 a terrifying personality translator nyo i dot bo studio editor nyo i dot bo studio phone tianlan wanted to scoff but she kept a straight face and continued with her gentle reminder she's not in a good position to marry royalty anymore i suggest you make other plans and give this wonderful gentleman 
whom you speak so highly of, to my sister instead. All of Feng Shuyu's clothes had been torn off in public, and she still wanted to marry royalty. What lofty dreams she had! Feng Tianlan, give me the token, and I'll arrange a marriage for you tomorrow. Since putting it politely hadn't worked, Feng Xiang became angry and started to threaten. Feng Tianlan merely raised an eyebrow. And what if I say no? Humph. Nobody wants a woman who has been rejected, not even as a second wife. Feng Xiang kept his eyes on the brocade box. He was just shy of snatching it away from her. The Tianhai Trade House has a shopkeeper who likes girls with good complexions. If you continue to be disobedient, I'll get him to haul you away. Feng Tianlan raised another eyebrow at this. So, if she gave him the token, he'd make her the wife of a pervert general. If she didn't give him the token, he'd make her a shopkeeper's concubine. What sort of father was this? He did not deserve to be called a father. I heard that some medicine that she ate destroyed third sister's cinnabar field, and not an external force, Feng Tianlan narrowed her eyes as she spoke, trying to direct them with her words. She only took a marrow cleansing pill and a spirit boosting pill, so there must have been some problem with these two pills. Did you go and check? Don't try to change the topic. Hurry up and give me the token. Feng Xiang could not think about anything else but that marriage token. He had been waiting for it for the past ten years. Su Jiai's maternal instinct was stronger, and she quickly asked Feng Tianlan, What do you mean? Don't interrupt. Can't you tell which matter is more important? Feng Xiang was irritated that Su Jiai had cut into his conversation. Be no elderm, this concerns you or, so how can you just ignore it? Of course, we have to investigate properly. Su Jiai shouted back at him. Whenever she thought about how her genius daughter had now become a good dot four dot nothing, her heart ached terribly. Feng Xiang retorted, take the token back first, and we'll get to the other matters later. Yu Er is now considered useless, so I will not let this matter rest. She is our pride and joy. Feng Tianlan watched as they started arguing about whether the marriage token was more important than investigating what had happened to Feng Shuyu. She smirked and turned to leave. It was clear that Feng Xiang would do anything to achieve what he wanted. Nobody was more important than him. Such a selfish and shameless man. Feng Tianlan, stop there. Feng Xiang suddenly realized that she had walked off and quickly shouted after her. Seeing that she was not stopping, he leaped in her direction and sent a palm wind toward her back. When she felt the powerful palm wind coming toward her, she quickly moved to one side. The strong wind rushed past her face, making her cheek hurt from its sheer force. Are you trying to kill me? Feng Tianlan stood where she was and stared at Feng Xiang with cold eyes. Her face was still numb from the palm wind rushing past her, making her look even more hostile. Although she was used to Feng Xiang's repeated attempts to murder her, somehow, this body still felt deeply hurt every time. Even the most ferocious animals take good care of their young, Feng Tianlan thought to herself. But Feng Xiang will not stop trying to kill me. What sort of terrifying personality does this man have? Feng Xiang dissipated the wind and stood in front of Feng Tianlan. His eyes remained steadfast on the token in Feng Tianlan's hands as he said, So long as you give me that token, I will give you all the riches you want. I can even make you one of my heirs. Chapter 74 You have to weigh the consequences of killing me you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 74 You have to weigh the consequences of killing me dot translator. Nyo I dot bo studio editor. Nyo I dot bo studio phone Tianlan looked at him with profound scorn, her eyes cold, and she started attacking Feng Xiang where it hurt the most. Looks like you've forgotten where you've come from, forgotten your roots. Never forget, even if you change your surname to Feng, the blood of the two family continues to run through your veins, and that is a fact that will never change. Shut your mouth. Feng Xiang's face reddened with anger as he clenched his fist, 
gritted his teeth, and glared at her with bloodshot eyes. Fong Tianlan continued mocking him in her calm voice as she laughed, you'll always be a member of the Tu family and never a member of the Fong family. A son dot in dot law who marries into a family never decides who gets to be its heir. You little ingrate. Fong Xiang finally couldn't hold his anger anymore. He threw out powerful bouts of palm winds, each one strong enough to kill. Fong Tianlan could feel a tremendous amount of spiritual force coming for her, and she knew that, given the difference in their power levels, she could only try to dodge the attack. There was no way of fighting back. She was only a mid-dot-stage spiritualist and was no match for an advanced-dot-stage spiritual grandmaster. She was only able to keep dodging the attacks and could not fight him. Feng Xiang was so agitated that he had lost all reason, sending out lethal blow after lethal blow, refusing to relent because she was his daughter. Bam! Feng Tianlan was not able to dodge one of the palm winds in time and was hit on the shoulder. She crashed onto the stone table and rolled off. The brocade box in her hands fell to the ground. Feng Xiang saw that the box had fallen to the ground and pounced on the box. But Feng Tianlan was faster. She rolled over and grabbed the box, then hid it in the pill scroll realm. Seeing that the brocade box had disappeared, Feng Xiang angrily gathered all his most potent spiritual forces in his hands and directed them at Feng Tianlan's head, intending to split her skull into pieces. Feng Tianlan looked up and found a weak spot in his spiritual force. Enduring the terrible pain that she was in, she rolled to one side and stood up. A dagger appeared in her hand. She thrust the blade toward the weak area, stabbing straight into Feng Xiang's upper arm. Then, she pulled the knife out. Bang! Feng Xiang let out a furious roar, sending Feng Tianlan flying with a mighty kick. He gathered up his fists to strike her with force equal to half a ton. If you don't want the token, then you can kill me. Feng Tianlan coldly shouted as she saw the angry fists coming for her. In the next moment, the fists with as much power as a half-dot-ton weight stopped right in front of Feng Tianlan's face. The wind generated by the force blew past her, contorting her face and blowing her hair back. Her face went numb from the pain. She was certain that, if this fist had struck her, it would have fragmented her skull and killed her on the spot. However, she was simply unable to defend herself because a spiritualist would definitely lose to a spiritual grandmaster. She was no match for Feng Xiang. Give me the token. Feng Xiang continued to fix his eyes on Feng Tianlan in anger. Some of his blood was on her face. These droplets formed a floral pattern, like plum blossoms blooming all over. It made her look like some demon, which struck fear in his heart. But he was unable to pinpoint exactly what he was afraid of. Feng Tianlan used her right hand to support herself and slowly stood up. She looked up at Feng Xiang coldly and made sure every word rang out loud and clear. The Feng clan, the Feng name, and all of your lives will be mine, sooner or later. The token. Feng Xiang only cared about the token. To him, as long as he got his hands on this great treasure, he did not have to fear this good.4. Nothing. Feng Tianlan continued staring straight at Feng Xiang, then used a chilling voice to respond, If you want to kill me, you'd better weigh the consequences first. Then, she turned and left. She felt sorry for the previous owner of this body because the girl had such a terrible father. In the future, she told herself, I will become stronger and show no mercy to this father because he is not fit to be one. Chapter 75 The Phone Clan Seal You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 75 The Phone Clan Seal Translator Nyo Ida Studio Editor Nyo Ida Studio Feng Xiang's thoughts immediately cleared when he heard what that icy voice had said. He narrowed his eyes and watched Feng Tianlan leave but did not dare attack her anymore. It was true that if he killed her now, he would have to consider the consequences. Feng Tianlan was not a useless woman that nobody cared about anymore. 
Now, she was a sensation throughout South Wind's nation, the underdog good.4. Nothing who'd managed to turn the tables on her challenger. If he killed her, he would be the prime suspect. If he were convicted of killing his own daughter, all his plans would go down the drain. Still, it was also a horrible feeling to see the treasure that he'd wanted so badly for so long finally within reach and be unable to get his hands on it. Su Jiayi went up to him and called him gently, my dear. She had straightened out her thoughts after the quarrel earlier and decided that it was better to go with whatever her husband said and not argue with him. Feng Xiang rubbed his temples. His head hurt as he thought about what means he could use to obtain the Feng family treasure. Su Jiayi knew what was giving Feng Xiang a headache, so she gently suggested, she's a hot topic in the country, so you can't kill her now. But we can still arrange a marriage for her. Then, when the deal goes through, we'll get the token back. You think she'll listen? Feng Xiang snorted. Looking at the way Feng Tianlan had behaved just now, it was apparent that she wasn't going to allow anyone to make decisions for her. Otherwise, she would have handed the treasure over to him by now. She's in a rebellious stage. If you are so hard on her, she's not going to give it to you. Feng Xiang motioned for her to continue talking. You've never shown her any paternal love, so, of course, she will rebel. If you want her to give you the token, then you have to talk to her nicely and slowly coax her into giving it to you. Su Jiayi continued to explain her plan to Feng Xiang. After listening, Feng Xiang had an evil glint in his eyes. Dot he said, go find a matchmaker soon and check with General Wang what he thinks. This is a good match. Su Jiayi planned to marry Feng Tianlan off to General Wang without seeking her consent. Once the marriage was confirmed, the token had to be taken from Feng Tianlan. For this to work, in front of Feng Tianlan, Feng Xiang had to play the role of the good father. If that still didn't work, then they'd have to resort to some dirty tricks. After all, once she was with child, there was nowhere she could go. On the other side of the house, Feng Tianlan dragged herself back to the courtyard with a broken left shoulder. She looked at the rundown state of the courtyard and thought about how her mother had initially built the heavenly phoenix court for her. She told herself that once she finished healing, she would take back everything that belonged to her, bit by bit, starting with heavenly phoenix court. Mississippi, Chuling was cooking in the small shed, which she had built herself. She saw Feng Tianlan slowly staggering back with her shoulder hanging loosely, and her face went white. She rushed over choking back sobs as she asked, did master beat you again? Was her shoulder broken? I'm fine, Feng Tianlan smiled as she replied. She had already set her bones back in place and taken a grade 5 nurturing pill, so she would be fine after resting for a while. I should have followed you. Then you wouldn't have. Feng Tianlan took some time to comfort Chuling, who was crying and blaming herself. Once Chuling was less emotional, she went back to her room and retrieved the brocade box from the pill scroll realm. She was curious to see what it was that Feng Xiang wanted so badly. She opened the box and saw a seal intricately carved with a fire phoenix. On closer inspection, she realized that the other side was engraved with the word Feng. The Feng clan seal. Feng Tianlan raised her eyebrows, trying to figure out what was going on. Why wasn't this seal with Feng Xiang? Instead, it was her token of marriage that had now been returned to her. Did this mean that Feng Xiang had never had the Feng clan seal in the first place? Was he so anxious to get the seal back to secure his position as the Feng clan head? Chapter 76 The Calm Before the Storm You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 76 the Calm Before the Storm Translator Nyo I.B.O. Studio Editor Nyo I.B.O. Studio Phone Clan Seal Token of Marriage Phone Tianlan looked at the half-dot-heart ring on her left index finger then at the shiny blood-dot-red seal. Her head was full of questions. She couldn't figure out what the two items had to do with each other. She just couldn't understand, 
the token of marriage between her and Si Rong was the Fong clan seal, but then, Si Ma Bai had forcibly put the half dot heart ring on her and claimed that this was the token of marriage. She also thought that the emperor's attitude toward her was very strange, he seemed to be protecting her. He even seemed to treat her better than his own son, Si Rong, but she couldn't figure out why. Fong Tianlan could only sense that there were many things she still didn't know. It was like a thick cloud of fog, where one layer cleared to reveal yet another layer, and she couldn't see what was behind it all. Since she couldn't figure it out, she decided not to think about it anymore. She decided to concentrate on getting better, then training. Feng Xiuyu was injured and stuck in bed, so she should have several days of peace. The next few days were indeed peaceful. Feng Xiuyu was injured and couldn't leave her bed. Si Rong stayed by her side every day and spent vast amounts of money to buy nurturing pills for her injured cinnabar field and meridian channels. He hoped to find a restoration pill to restore her cinnabar field so that she could regain her power and talent. Meanwhile, Feng Xiang was busy trying to matchmake Feng Tianlan with General Wan. He hoped they'd settle down quickly, and he was no longer as agitated as before. Feng Tianlan kept busy by bringing Chuling to the Luo residence. She taught Chuling and Luo Yunju how to become spiritual practitioners using their elements, rather than ordinary spiritual masters. At the Luo residence, Feng Tianlan looked at them sitting cross-legged and said, Slowly, now, I want you to think of something you like, or someone, and what color it is. As long as you have a deep impression in your mind, you can find the element that is most suitable for your training. Luo Yunju and Chuling listened to Feng Tianlan's sweet and clear voice and did as she said. Luo Yunju thought of the time when she was bullied as a child, and Feng Tianlan had appeared in front of her. Her beautiful phoenix dot shaped eyes were as beautiful as the stars in the sky, and they appeared vividly in her memory. She remembered how blue they were, how beautifully blue, and she became immersed in that blue. Very soon, she could feel that she was amid spiritual forces. Many little blue drops started flying toward her, making her feel cool and relaxed. As for Chuling, she also thought of Feng Tianlan. But in her memories, Feng Tianlan was always injured and covered with blood, so all she saw was red. After that, many red drops also flew into her body. The heat from the drops made her feel uncomfortable. Every drop emanated power. Tianlan. After an hour, Luo Yunju opened her eyes excitedly and released her palm to reveal a crystal dot clear drop of water. Then, she said with flushed cheeks, I'm the water element. To her, Tianlan was as gentle as water. Feng Tianlan nodded gently. Water element, that's very suitable for the galaxy whip. She had thought that since Luo Yunju liked the color red so much, her element would be the fire element. She had not expected her element to be water. So, this was a girl who was strong on the outside but gentle on the inside. I never thought that you could train in this way, Luo Yunju said as she suddenly burst into laughter. I'm going to train myself then shock everybody silly. Yunju could be considered a genius now, at least, in the eyes of an ordinary spiritual master. Feng Tianlan smiled, but she frowned when she saw Chuling's face drenched with sweat. She called to her, Chuling. Chuling. Wake up. Chuling wasn't waking up, so Feng Tianlan pushed a force out of her palm and broke the path of spiritual force that was flying continuously into Chuling. Chuling felt a dull ache in her chest then vomited a mouthful of blood. Her eyes were full of tears as she responded, Mississippi. Chapter 77 My mother gave birth to me, but my father never taught me you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 77 My mother gave birth to me, but my father never taught me translator. Nyo I da bio studio editor. Nyo I da bio studio Chuling couldn't finish her sentence and started crying. She was too scared to think about whether she had failed again or not. She felt like she was a stupid person who'd failed at marrow cleansing, failed at finding her element, 
and failed her Mississippi BVE Seafoam Tianlan helped chewing up and wiped away the blood from her mouth with a handkerchief. She said, your element is fire, but you were too immersed in it, so it nearly consumed you. Don't worry. Just take your time. It wasn't easy to control the absorption of the elements in spiritual forces. Anyone who took in too much would be consumed by the elements, resulting in the body exploding and, finally, death. I, I, Chuling looked at her with eyes full of tears. She'd seen her miss covered in blood and was afraid that she was too weak to protect her. You can start training already. I'll find a skill that's suitable for you in due time. First, you can work on building your foundational skills. The skills she'd learned back on the Shantian continent were not suitable for anybody below the spiritual grandmaster level. Each person should start at their level and slowly advance. Chuling was only a beginner, so she was most suitable for low dot level skills. Chuling looked at the floor and kept nodding without saying anything. She didn't want to drag her miss down. Gosh, don't just keep crying. You're too fragile. Luo Yunju squeezed Chuling's shoulder and pledged her allegiance, don't you worry, Tianlan and I will protect you. She had a good impression of Chuling. She found her to be a loyal servant who treated Tianlan well. She would take care of whoever treated Tianlan well. Miss Luo. Chuling was touched, and tears started rolling down her cheeks again. Feng Tianlan and Luo Yunju could only laugh as they really didn't know what else to do with this crybaby. Since they had identified elements to train with, Feng Tianlan taught them how to absorb spiritual qi and to remove all the toxins from their bodies so that they could train faster. These moments made her think of her time on the Xientian continent. Back then, she had also possessed extremely high levels of understanding about techniques. She had been able to teach Jianying and Xinyanya from a young age, and they had been able to become more skilled than their peers, which had made them famous as geniuses. But, in the end, Feng Tianlan looked up at the two ladies in front of her. Luo Yunju was strong on the outside but gentle inside, whereas Chuling was weak on the outside and strong on the inside. They were two extreme types. Because she trusted these two, Feng Tianlan was confident that she would not make the same mistake as before. At that moment, a maidservant called out, Miss, someone from the Feng residence has come to ask Miss Feng to go back. Luo Yunju and Chuling opened their eyes and stood up. Feng Tianlan raised an eyebrow at this, thinking that the people back in the Feng residence must be itching to get at her after just a few days of peace. Just as well, she thought, since my body has recovered and can fight them now. Yunju, I'll go back first, then. Tianlan, I'll go with you, said Luo Yunju. If she went along, perhaps Feng Xiang would be less likely to attack Tianlan. Feng Tianlan laughed and shook her head. No need. They won't dare to touch me now. Okay, then. Let me know if you need anything. Feng Tianlan nodded and brought Chuling back to the Feng residence. From afar, she could spot the maidservants busying themselves as if there were a guest in the house. Tianlan, come quickly. Su Jiayi quickly ran over to fetch her like a loving mother. Feng Tianlan ignored Su Jiayi's attempt to hold her hand and asked coldly, What are you up to now? Come along and greet General Wang. You're already such a big girl but you don't have any manners, Feng Xiang chided Feng Tianlan. Feng Tianlan sarcastically replied, I have a mother who gave birth to me, but my father never taught me anything. Then again, it's fortunate that he didn't teach me anything. Heaven knows how terribly I might have turned out if he had. Chapter 78 Arranging a Marriage for Feng Tianlan You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 78 Arranging a Marriage for Feng Tianlan Translator Nyo I. Bo Studio Editor Nyo I. Bo Studio O.org Feng Xiang immediately showed displeasure at these words. What sort of daughter is this, he thought, indirectly saying that his character is weak. 
Su Jie quickly rushed in and smiled as she explained to General Wang, our Tianlan is a little bit direct in the way she speaks, but she's a very kind dot hearted girl inside. I like bold and straight dot talking women, General Wang replied. He looked Feng Tianlan up and down. He could tell that she was a fine specimen, even with her clothes on. While that huge scar on her face would affect most men's appetites, General Wang, of course, loved women with scars and loved giving them even more. Feng Tianlan's scar only whet his appetite. More importantly, he had recently heard about this legendary Feng Tianlan. She was definitely not a good dot four dot nothing. Marrying a genius would greatly improve his prospects, so he wasn't going to complain about anything. Women were all the same to him, the only difference was how many times they'd had sex, the rest didn't matter. Feng Tianlan scanned General Wang with cold eyes. She thought. So, calling me back in such a hurry was to arrange for this marriage, huh? She had been wondering why the place had been so quiet recently. So this was what awaited her. General Wang felt his body go stiff when Feng Tianlan stared at him so coldly. He felt like he was merely an ant looking up at a queen, and it made him break out in cold sweat. My queen. General Wang became even more interested in Feng Tianlan. After abusing so many girls, he had never come across one who caused him so much fear with just one look. He was willing to be abused by her. Miss Feng. General Wang looked at Feng Tianlan, his eyes filled with admiration. He stopped himself short of kneeling and begging his queen to spank him. Feng Tianlan tore her eyes away from him in disgust and looked back coldly at Feng Xiang. She said, I will decide who I want to marry. If you try matchmaking me again, I will not let you off easy. After that, she turned to leave, not caring if she was rude. Seeing this icy side of Feng Tianlan, General Wang wasn't the slightest bit angry. On the contrary, he was excited and couldn't wait to give her a whip to spank him hard. General Wang, our Tianlan is really. General Wang snapped out of his daydreaming and quickly said, Oh no. Don't worry. I like her the way she is. When can I marry her? He couldn't wait. He was already imagining her holding a whip and exuding that queenly aura. He used to get excited when he hurt others, but this time, he felt that he would get excited if she hurt him. Nobody else in the world could make him feel this way. Feng Xiang was initially taken aback by these words, but then she happily replied, Go arrange for a wedding coordinator, and we'll pick a good date as soon as possible. Sure. I'll go find a coordinator this very minute, enthused General Wang, full of anticipation. He immediately got up and left to look for a coordinator, hoping to find one soon. Feng Xiang was very excited about this. Once the marriage was fixed, he could get hold of the Feng family treasure and then finally rise above the emperor. General Wang walked out of the Feng residence, and his mind was filled with finding a coordinator, so he did not notice that someone had quietly followed him. Who is it? General Wang sensed danger behind him. He turned around and only saw a figure wearing black. Suddenly, his throat hurt. He clutched his neck in pain and tried to call for help but wasn't able to get any words out because blood was pouring out of his mouth. Chapter 79 Whoever tries to harm the princess shall die you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 79 Whoever tries to harm the princess shall die translator. Nyo I da Bio Studio Editor. Nyo I da Bio Studio, how dare you get any ideas about the princess? You deserve to die. A slim figure landed in front of General Wang's dead body, pasted a piece of paper onto his forehead, and leaped away. He had been instructed by the war god to watch Feng Xiang and ensure that the princess, Feng Tianlan, was safe. The original plan had been for him to watch over Feng Tianlan secretly. But she was very sharp and would detect him immediately, so the plan had changed to watching Feng Xiang instead. Early the next morning, Feng Tianlan was calmly meditating in the courtyard when she felt a hostile force coming her way. 
she opened her eyes and saw a furious Fong Xiang marching over. Fong Tianman, how could you send someone to kill General Wang? You have created another enemy for the Fongs. Fong Xiang shouted in Fong Tianlan's face. What? Fong Tianlan looked up in confusion at the angry Fong Xiang. General Wang. You mean the one who came yesterday, Binov Kong Fong Xiang assumed she was pretending not to know and became even angrier. It's fine if you don't like him, but why did you kill him? General Wang is a high dot ranking officer in South Wind's nation. Killing him is as good as going against the emperor. Do you think you're above the law? He's been murdered. Fong Tianlan scoffed slightly. General Wang was dead, but that had nothing to do with her. You weren't the one who killed him. Fong Xiang saw that Fong Tianlan seemed genuinely confused by this matter and started to doubt himself. Fong Tianlan laughed. Oh please. Did you think that I, a mere first dot stage spiritualist, could kill an advanced dot stage spiritual master? She'd already maxed out her skills battling Feng Shiryu, who was only a mid-dot stage spiritualist. General Wang was an advanced dot stage spiritual master, and while she probably could have thrown a few moves at him, it wasn't logically possible for her to have killed him. Besides, the Wang residence was heavily guarded. Then, who killed him? Feng Xiang realized that what she said made sense, but he still felt that she was connected to the incident. Did you hire someone to kill him? Feng Tianlan laughed even harder as she pointed to the rundown walls of her courtyard and asked Feng Xiang sarcastically, You think I have that sort of money? She did have money from secretly selling her pills, but that was not the point. Besides, killing a general didn't require an assassin. Plenty of other things could kill him without her lifting a finger. Feng Xiang stared long and hard at Feng Tianlan, but he also knew that what she said was true. He let out a snort and said, We won't just let this matter go just like that. Your mother and I will find another man for you to marry. Feng Tianlan frowned as she watched Feng Xiang leave angrily, and she called Chu Ling over to help her find out what had happened. Everyone in town was talking about General Wang's murder, so it wasn't hard to get the story. Chu Ling quickly came back and told Feng Tianlan everything she'd heard. General Wang's throat had been slit not far from the Feng residence, and a piece of paper was pasted on his forehead listing all the reasons why he deserved death along with evidence. This last bit was the more significant reason why news of his murder had spread like wildfire. Who in this city could have killed an advanced dot stage spiritual master undetected? Feng Tianlan immediately thought of Si Mobai. He was definitely capable, but he wasn't in town, so it couldn't have been him. Feng Tianlan laughed at herself silently. How could she think that General Wang had died because of her? And how could she think that Si Ma Bai had killed him? What a joke! Whoever had killed General Wang, his murder had settled one problem for her. At least she didn't have to bother with this matter anymore. Just three days later, Feng Xiang brought a man of around 20.6 or 20.7 years into the courtyard where Feng Tianlan was staying. He happily told the young man with a smile, Our Tianlan has a scar on her face, but if she gets her hands on a beautifying pill, she'll go back to being a great beauty. Besides, her skin is as fair as porcelain. Chapter 80 Another One Dead You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 80 Another One Dead Translator Nyo I.B.O. Studio Editor Nyo I.B.O. Studio, what do you want now? Feng Tianlan heard the voices outside her room and walked outside. Feng Xiang replied to her in a serious voice, This is the shopkeeper of the Tianhai Trade House. Come quickly and say hello. The Tianhai Trade House belongs to Flying Frost Pavilion, so don't make any trouble. Feng Tianlan looked at the young man who had come with Feng Xian. He was looking at her with eyes full of lust. She coldly reminded Feng Xiang, Feng Shuyu's cinnabar field was destroyed by a pill she that she ate. Are you not going to check who last touched those pills? 
How dare you insinuate such a thing? Dr. Fong would never do that. Fong Xiang knew what she was getting at. Dr. Fong had been the last person to touch the marrow cleansing pill that Yuer had eaten, so Fong Tianlan was suggesting that he was the only one who could have added the poison. But Dr. Fong was a grade 3 alchemist, and Fong Xiang didn't want to offend him. Regardless of whether Dr. Fong had done it or not, he would simply disregard this possibility and blame everything on Fong Tianlan. After all, it would be easier to find a reason to get rid of Fong Tianlan without repercussions if he could find her guilty of as many crimes as possible. The shopkeeper was afraid of Fong Tianlan's frighteningly cold stares. But when he looked at Fong Tianlan's flawless porcelain white skin, he immediately took a liking to her. He thought that her skin must be as soft as a baby's. Fong clan head, you're really giving her to me. The shopkeeper was itching to have Fong Tianlan and couldn't wait to touch her beautiful skin. O.org, of course. She's been rejected by the royal family, so it's up to you whether you want her as a wife or concubine. Just marry her as soon as possible, Fong Xiang was quick to respond. He knew that the moment Fong Tianlan got married, he would get his hands on the Fong family treasure. Fong Tianlan saw that the two of them were talking about her marriage as if there nobody else were watching. She asked the shopkeeper teasingly, General Wang came to ask my hand in marriage just three days ago and got himself killed. Aren't you afraid that you'll be next to die? Fong clan head. Fong Xiang quickly explained, that's just a coincidence. General Wang was killed because he had committed a crime, and not because he wanted to marry her. So, don't worry about this. You can marry Tianlan in peace. Fong Tianlan's expression darkened. She warned the shopkeeper, I advise you not to proceed with this. Otherwise, you're next to die because I'm going to kill you. She didn't care how or why the general had died. If this shopkeeper dared to have any funny ideas about her, she was going to kill him. Such audacity. Feng Tianlan's insolence angered the shopkeeper. He told Feng Xiang, go get ready, and I'll get someone to fetch her in a few days. She was a lowly good. For nothing who dared to say such outrageous things. He was determined to teach her a lesson. Otherwise, it would be such a waste of her beautiful skin. Sure, it's a deal, Feng Xiang replied happily and escorted the shopkeeper out of the door, completely ignoring Feng Tianlan's wishes. Feng Tianlan coldly stared as she watched them walk away. Feng Xiang was a scoundrel who deserved to die for allowing his daughter to be a concubine. One hour later, Feng Xiang stormed into the courtyard angrily once more. He kicked the door open and shouted in a rage, Fong Tianlan. How dare you kill someone from the Tianhai trade house. You must be tired of living. Another one dead. Fong Tianlan was slightly confused. She had intended to wait till nighttime before killing the shopkeeper, but he'd been murdered within the hour. How dare you feign innocence. Fong Xiang angrily shouted. He nearly swung his fists at Fong Tianlan but stopped short when he saw her cold glare. He felt fear in his heart.